My younger daughter asked me, what you printing? I said, a T. She said, oh, a letter T, not T-E-A. I said, no, 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 not T-E-A. Huh. I spent the next hour looking at teacups online. So between this Wedgwood teacup and the current view out our kitchen window lies the inspiration for this letter T design. The first thing to do is cut two millimeter wide strips and roll them into tight coils. I've got three made out of a half strip of red and then wrapped in pink, five made out of one strip of red wrapped in pink, and then six using two strips of pink. And take the small coils and shape them into ovals and then make concave. I'm just using my nail here. Glue the insides and let dry. And then glue them together like this. And that will be the center of the rose. If you have pansy hands like me, go ahead and um, get the medium sized coils and let them take a swim. Really softens them up. And then squeeze one side into a point and curve the other end outward. And you still want to be careful with these because they're not glued, they're just wet and soft so they can still come apart. But after you shape them, then you can brush a layer of glue on the back side and that'll help keep it together. Now if you've got tough hands, you can take a more proven approach and rub glue on both sides and use your impressive finger muscles to shape into a point and then, oh, you cheater. That's it. We're going back to the honest pansy method. Large petals dropped into water and shaped the same way. Glue on the back. To assemble the rose, I'm making use of a circles template to prop up the medium petals as I glue them together, slightly overlapping each other. And let that dry a while. Then once it's stiff, glue the center cluster in the middle. and let that dry a while. The side that the people are gonna see, that stays kind of this matte finish and kind of has this velvety look to it, which matches the real texture of a, of a rose, right? And then you can see when I flip it over, the other side definitely looks harder and shinier. That's just a little bit of a difference between um, the pansy method and the tough method, I guess. Then put a dollop of glue on the large petals and give it a few minutes to let the tacky glue become even tackier. And then attach them to the underside of the rose. Adjust, adjust, adjust. and then let dry all the way. Meanwhile, you can make some more clusters to use as rosebuds. And for the hip at the base, yes, I had to look that up, rolled a short strip of two millimeter wide green into a tight coil and make it concave using whatever you have handy. Take another green strip and make diagonal cuts to create long skinny triangles. Put a decent amount of glue in the hip trying not to block that center hole and add in the triangles so the pointy ends are outward and upward.
cut a couple inches of floral wire, make a loop at one end, and then bend it 90 degrees. You can put some glue on there, um, but in retrospect, it's probably not needed. Stick the wire through that center hole and pull it snug. The loop keeps it from pulling all the way through and the 90 degree bend leaves room for the flower bud, which we glue in with a blob of glue. Let dry completely. And we're gonna cover the wire with floral tape. Basically just using your quilling rolling skills, stretch out the tape a little bit to get that stickiness going. Put the wire at the edge of the tape and then just use your thumb and roll it up. The easiest way I found to get it started. Time to make the leaves two millimeter wide strips again. Pick a green, roll it up and shape it into a marquise. Then wrap in a contrasting shade of green, leaving a bit of a tail. And one marquise will be the center top of the leaf. Glue another on the bottom half on both sides, really squishing them together. Another two below that. I liked having that tail to prevent holes along the middle in between the marquise pieces, but um, you don't need it otherwise, so once it's all dry, you can cut it off. This is where I pull out my letter template and my light box so I know where to glue my rose because I want it at the middle of the T. Once I have my rose placed, I can figure out where I want the buds and the leaves and glue it all down. I really liked having the buds on wire so it's poseable. And the floral tape gives it more thickness and stickability, if that makes sense. I was worried that the wire alone would become unglued too easily. And then, yeah, I would become unglued. It's always nice to have the focal point finished. Gives you a sense of accomplishment. Time to shape and glue the outline. So everything on the tee from here on out uses five millimeter wide strips. So I took three strips of white and stacked them and glued them together. And then I um, ghetto gilled the top edge with gold nail polish. And then glue those at the top and the bottom of the T. For the upper scallops, make some C-scrolls by curling both ends of a short strip. For the lower scallops, I just shaped a continuous strip. And for the many, many vertical lines, I took another strip of the same blue and ran it through the crimper. Gives it some great texture and it adds extra visual interest. I am really glad I made a template for this part so I didn't have to stress about getting the right spacing for the lines. In fact, this was, um, strangely enough, 
probably the calmest and least stressful part of the entire project. I expected a lot of impatience with the repetition, but instead I found it meditative. Isn't that nice? Maybe I'm becoming a better person. So the last part is to make some cute little flowers. We do that by taking a short strip of the pink, five millimeters wide, and make a marquise. And you can try pinching both of those tiny ends or you can just flatten the whole thing. And then take a green strip and fold it accordion style into a small M. Glue the loose ends to form a V. And then curl both sides downward a bit and glue the marquees in the middle. And glue a flower under each C-scroll. And voila! Time to admire your work. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day. See you next time.